Thank you. Can you all hear me pretty well? I don't know, am I coming through on the mic as well? Okay, I wanna make sure, awesome. Quick raise of hands, and I don't work very well off of, I work, I do a lot of speaking at the college, doing coming in for guest talks, and that crowd is a tough one. I mean, we're talking about when you come up there, it's either this, this, or this, is usually most of the facial expressions. So I'm excited to talk to this crowd. Um, so we're gonna warm up here. I know I'm the one who's kicking us off, so I want to try to provide as much energy. I know this is my first cup of coffee, so I'm also getting going here. But uh, by all means, please get up and get more coffee or whatever else. I will not be the one standing in between you and caffeine. I completely understand that's a dangerous place to be, so I don't take any offense to that. I will gladly let you go in peace. Okay, so who has heard of me before? Who has heard my name or heard me speak before? Raise of hands. Okay, that hurts. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, cool. So let me give you a little bit of background of who I am and uh, kind of how I've gotten to where I am today. I was born in Illinois for a short stint. It was really cold, so we moved very quickly to Colorado, where I grew up. And <laughs> so I lived in Colorado. Um, I lived in a town called Fort Collins. Anyone familiar with Fort Collins? Okay, wow, awesome. Love that city, great city to grow up in. I lived there in the city for a few years and then I actually moved up in the mountains for four years in a log house. So I've kind of lived the best of both worlds. I had a view of the Rocky Mountains outside my back porch and now I live at the beach. So I obviously I've lived here longer than Colorado so you can tell where my priorities lie. But I had a pretty awesome experience there. How in the world does this apply to social media or business? Don't worry, we're getting there. Okay, so I was homeschooled until ninth grade. And you can talk in front of people? I know, it's crazy, right? No, I'm just kidding. So I was homeschooled until ninth grade, and that provided a huge ability for me to spend a lot more time diving into what I loved. At the age of 11, I read the whole Rich Dad Poor Dad series. I knew I wanted to do business. My dad would set me up with interviews with people who were execs at John Deere, or execs at this company, or execs at this company. He took me on business trips, because he was like, I want you to be able to have the best experience you possibly can, and be able to run with any area of business. One of the jobs, I'm not gonna say businesses I own, because if I didn't show up and do it, it didn't happen. One of the jobs I owned was a entertainment company where I was a magician. For 10 years, I was a magician. And this included street performing with my little brother, making $12 an hour. Now, I had a huge height. Uh, I, hit, I grew very quickly. And so even though I was 13, people thought that I was in college. So they were like, oh, I'm not going to give this guy any money. Now, my brother, however, he was like this tall, still missing teeth. He looked like he was five years younger. And so him just juggling, he, people, he made like $80 an hour juggling open air. I'm making 12, and I'm like, I'm doing the part that's actually hard. I have to actually entertain people. You're just sitting there juggling and telling dumb jokes. But anyway, so kind of learned very quickly on the value of a dollar. Uh, in college, I worked five jobs. I was a DJ, a lifeguard, an RA. I bust tables at landfall, and I was an assistant wedding photographer. So that helped me graduate debt free. I learned very quickly what I wanted to do. Uh, realized very quickly the ROI of social media. That's usually one of the biggest hot topics that people want to talk about. Or like, what's this worth? What's the, what's the value of this? For me, within the first, come on in, come on in, join us. So for, for, for me, I launched a Facebook business page when they had just come out for my DJ company. Now it was perfect for me. My audience were typically sororities and fraternities. They booked me for a lot of formals and different things that they were doing there. And of course, weddings. So those, those were, that was my audience. Within the first week of launching a business page, not having a website, not having any of these other things, I, book, I booked six gigs. That was like $3,000 cash in my pocket from one week of having a Facebook business page. 
So for me, it was easy. I was like, wow, this equals money. <laughs> this is an easy way to reach people. This is an easy way to do it. From there, I worked with a uh, classmate of mine where we launched the largest student-led event at UNCW to date. Does anyone know what it was? It happened in 2010, if that helps. It was all over the news. It was a flash mob rave at the library. Did anyone hear about that? <laughs> Potentially, maybe? Okay, cool. So if you watch any of the YouTube videos on that, you will see that Randall Library was significantly beyond capacity <laughs> for that <laughs> entryway in that area. 3,000 students came to the library for that event. And this was all done through a Facebook event. You know, a Facebook event, someone threw up, we threw up a Facebook event and that thing went viral. I mean, it was crazy. So that was another huge success. After that, went, worked for an agency for a little while. Um, I'll kind of speed things up so we can get into more of the meat of this. After that, went and worked for an agency for a little while, helped them do a lot of different accomplishments. Uh, one of those big kind of milestone accomplishments is we figured out kind of where the market was headed. We figured out some information that was about to change. Do you all remember the Facebook timeline change where Facebook basically changed their whole, their whole outlook and the way they do things? Well, we heard about that coming and I found some access to some early information on how to get it before anyone else. And so we launched a little page on how to do that. It got five million hits in two days. Five million hits. It, that page generated from those hits 400,000 Facebook page likes on zero dollars spent. Now here's the crazy part about that. How much revenue do you think those likes generated for that company? Zero, exactly, why? Because it wasn't the right audience. These were all people who wanted to know the tech information. They wanted to know how to get early access. They didn't care about what we sold or what the value we provided as a company. So it meant nothing. Now it's just a big vanity number that that company puts on their page. Like, look how popular we are, <laughs> according to all these people who don't care about our business. <laughs> so I know both sides of it. I've been on both sides. I saw at one of the conferences I was speaking at, the, I, was, I was kind of like the tool guy. Be careful with my words there. But I was the guy who got up and told everyone, like, here's, the, here's the, how you use these tools, here's how you do this, all that kind of stuff. So that was, that was my segment of the speaking gig. And HubSpot gets up there, which I'm actually going to be flying to Boston tonight to go meet with HubSpot. But HubSpot gets up there and they talk about inbound marketing, which is basically this idea of people have questions, help provide answers to those questions, and build it in a strategic way on your website so they're not Googling and spending their time trying to figure out how to work with you, but instead you're helping handhold them through the information on your website. Makes pretty good sense. And you know, she's leading this talk, this, this exact from HubSpot, um, Ellie, and she, Ellie's up there and saying, you should do this, create content. And they come back and they go, no, we don't have time. Like, find me the time to do it. I would love to, but there's no way. And that's when it was like, ding, light bulb went off. I said, what if I created a company that took these really complex problems and simplified them on their website? So we launched Huify three and a half years ago. It'll be four years this summer. And since then, in 2014, we were still struggling along. We did $75,000 in revenue, which was like, cool, you paid your rent and you guys had contractors, not employees. By the end of 2015, we did $450,000 in revenue and we had six full-time employees. This year, we're on track to do $1.2 million in revenue with a total of 12 employees. And I'm going to launch another company. So that is kind of where I've come from. Those are some of the things I've done. Um, let's get into how this actually matters for you all. So how many of you all want to, do, so want to know about social media for business reasons, for an occupation, for a job, anything else? Awesome, cool, very, very cool. 
How many of you all want to know him for personal reasons? Perfect. Okay, cool. Very, very helpful. For personal reasons, what are some of the, if you could, just go ahead and shout it out. That'd be awesome for me. What are some of the personal reasons that you want to get better at social media for? This is really helpful for me to kind of steer the dialogue and the discussion. Okay, awesome. It's called, the biggest reason why Facebook grew is called the grandma effect. What is the grandma effect? They're there, we're here, and we don't know what they're up to. Yes, exactly. And it all revolves around pictures. Yeah. Pictures. That is 100% why Facebook has exploded the way it has. So right now, people always talk about, you know, I have these conversations with some very powerful individuals who have been in business a lot longer than I have, and they'll say, look, our customers are not on Facebook. I'm like, really? Do your customers have children? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. We've established that. Do your customers have grandkids? Yes. So your customers don't care about your grandkids, their grandkids at all? No, they do. So they do have a Facebook. Well, well, yes, but they're not shopping for business. Well, yeah, I'm not shopping for business on Facebook. Like, why? However, you can still reach them, obviously, through Facebook. Okay, cool. Really helpful. Any other reasons that go beyond? Yes. Linda, please. Perfect. Absolutely. I completely agree. I have one of my best friends. I've known him since I was four years old. And he is doing really, really well. Still lives in Colorado. And one of the best means of communication that we have is Facebook. We can stay up on, you know, when we get on the phone, it's not like, hey, what have you been doing for the last four months? It's like, hey, I saw this. I saw you went to here. I saw you and your wife went on that president's trip for because for, you guys hit, you hit your sales number. Congrats. Like all that kind of stuff. And it helps us kind of stay more relevant. Very cool. Any other? These are really good examples. Any other examples? Yes. And I believe it. I believe it. I think it's like one, one in every four relationships meets online now, which is crazy. Oh, cool. That's awesome. A lot of Skype calls, I'm sure. Yeah, I was going to say lots of Skype. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I completely agree. So really quick sidebar story, and I apologize in advance. That's going to happen a lot, but it's okay. We're all going to get to a common goal here. So I actually, so Compact Power Equipment Rental obviously sounds like a real riveting company to work with, right? <laughs> so they were, are the, you actually potentially have worked or been a customer of theirs, but would have never known it. If you ever went to a Home Depot and rented a piece of large equipment, or you know, your son rented it, or, or your daughter rented it, or whatever, you were renting from Compact Power. So Compact Power operates within Home Depot. So we basically came to them and said, we need to be on Pinterest. And their jaws about hit the floor, and they were like, this is what we're paying you for? to tell us we need to be on Pinterest, you do realize we rent heavy equipment. There's nothing sexy about what we rent. It's basically, not to be sexist, but it's mostly guys using heavy equipment. That's what we do. And I went, yes, and when was the last time you decided you want to do your backyard? <laughs> Who's the one who decides who does what to rent the heavy equipment? So we wound up, they had, they had a link. There are, my whole job was to help basically reset the balance between the traffic coming from Home Depot because they had one link on Home Depot's site and because Home Depot gets so much traffic, that one link drove 40,000 visitors per month back to Compact Power's site because people would click on, they were like, okay, I want, yep, I want to rent heavy equipment, boom, and they would go to Compact Power site. So being the smart business people the whole group was, we decided the minute that that Home Depot manager realizes that he could have sold 40,000 more shovels that month if he didn't send us that traffic, 
we need to hurry up and diversify because that link is going to get cut very, very soon because it's pure traffic just going away from their site to us. So we wound up within three months, we were a fourth, I think, of the overall traffic coming to the site just from Pinterest. So 15,000 visitors within three months from Pinterest. So great question. Ladies, can you help me out? I love Pinterest. I'm all over Pinterest. But I'm also, I know I think I'm 3%, as in 3% of, of, the, of the Pinterest audience are male. So ladies, you want to fill in what Pinterest is? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Yes. So I'll, 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 I'll kind of, so thank, yes. Besides everything, <laughs> it's basically, yeah, it's basically a digital board, kind of like a bulletin board where if this whole group said, we are going to make this place look awesome, and everyone had ideas, they could pin up all their, all their ideas on one given board, and that's how they could plan a lot of things. So my, my wife and I planned, well, <laughs> my wife planned our wedding <laughs> on Pinterest, and a lot of people will do their houses, some people will do um, big events on Pinterest. It's, it's a huge driver for anything that is a B2C product and sells to a woman audience. You, by all means, you should be there. There's no question not to. Yes, Nancy. I was exploring Pinterest and I didn't know what it was for. And it asked me what I was interested in and I said elephants. To this day, <laughs> Sounds like they need to work on their system a little bit more. Make it a little bit easier so you're not locked in. Cool. All right, well, let's, let's, let's bring it back in. So let's talk about a couple principles that I think no matter what, either whether you're doing this for business or whether you're doing this for personal, will give you the best bang for your buck. Because a lot of times people will say, well, what's the trick? You know, what's the, you talked about driving all this traffic in two days. Well, I, that's what I want to know how to do. Or, you know, you got all those likes. That's what I want to know how to do. And Yes, that happened in two days, but that was also me testing 15, 20, 30 other projects that failed miserably. That was just the one that hit. That was the one that did. And I haven't repeated that same experiment. Now, the concept, the logic behind it, where it's basically like you have a piece of information that people want, make them do blank to gain information. That is a, is a very across the board great concept. So a lot of times you'll see like free ebook. Fill out form, get ebook. You know that is a way that we actually drive a lot of leads through our business right now because you can figure out whether people are interested or not. You can gain a lot more information, and then now I have the ability to actually reach out to a lead. So let's talk about a couple of things. So one is perception. Perception is reality. You want to alter reality, you alter perception. That's a one of a famous. I think that was from. I have to remember the right guy, but I think that was from a Pepsi marketing exec and it's so true i mean it's so true we did all these things last year as we talked about in revenue and i got a 60 dollar wall sticker with our name on it and we put that sticker on our on our we have a room not quite as big as this one but very similar and we have this is where all of us work you know we have our work area and then we have all these call rooms where we'll go for quiet time, naps, basically. No, I'm just kidding. No, or, you know, when we want to get away or make a call or whatever else. So we put this sticker in that wall, and, of course, it, it looks cool. I like it. We took a picture of it, put it on, and that is the most viral thing. All these people are saying, congrats, so proud of you guys. I'm like, it's a sticker. Like, but again, it went ding. And I'm, th I'm realizing this was 60 bucks. Like, we could have got that when we started, you know, but... You know, you have no idea what we've actually accomplished, but then we remembered perception is reality. And that is a, such a key thing. So let's talk about a couple of things. One, your profile picture. Having something, and I don't mean professional as in it's time for me to put on my suit and tie and, you know, take the, what is it, the like cloudy backdrop where you look like you're taking like a school picture or something. So I don't mean something like that. I just mean something that shows off your face. These glasses aren't the best. You can tell that they're kind of, they have a blue tint to them, and that's because I stare at a lot of screens all day, so I got 
glasses that have a blue tint, so it helps adjust my eyes a little bit. But I wouldn't want to take a picture with these glasses. Why? Yeah, you can't see my eyes. The reflection kind of inhibits, and I apologize because now everyone's like, oh, that creepy guy behind. And I knew I ran that risk in starting up here and talking, but with these glasses on. But this is a perfect example of, even though I try to wear glasses most of the time, most of my actual pictures, like a profile picture, I'll usually take my glasses off because I want people to see my eyes. So in profile pictures, a lot of times, it, you know, you might be out on a boat, so you've got sunglasses on, and you want to show off the fact that you like deep sea fishing or sun tanning or whatever. That's awesome. I just wouldn't suggest it for a profile picture. Or just take your shades off for a second, take the picture with your massive mahi or whatever you're doing, and then, and then you can go ahead and put that up as a profile picture because it shows off your face and it tells more of a story. Um, cropped pictures that are completely cropped, so it's just your face, I think are fine, especially because you'll see only the thumbnail on the side when people are in their news feeds. But I kind of like pictures that tell a little bit more of a story. Um, you can check out if you want. How many of you all, if you want to go on your phones really quickly, we'll take a quick segue. Actually, you know what, we'll just write this down. We can do this for, for later. But go ahead and write down Josh Harkis dash Facebook. And I have two Facebooks, because I'm so conceited. No, I'm just kidding. No, I have two Facebooks. One is a business page, and one is my personal. The thing I actually want you to see is my personal page. And you will see why. There's a little new Easter egg with the profile picture. So we'll just leave that suspense out there, and I'll let you all check it out. But it, it, you'll see very quickly, basically, we wanted to figure out how do we tell more of a story with our profile pictures, and how do we kind of expand that to gain more interest from people? So we did a little cool little test there recently. Okay, so profile picture, appearance. Another thing is people think what you post is fact and what you believe. How many of you all have friends that post things on Facebook that you are just like, this is so wrong? <laughs> this is just blatantly wrong. I mean, this is like, the sources for that article were, well, they just didn't exist. So pretty much the person who wrote that article just made it up on the spot. It was from like The Onion. Who's familiar with what The Onion is? Yeah, it's a satirical made up news thing. And so a lot of times people will post these stories from The Onion and be like, can you believe this? And it's like, you shouldn't be believing this. It's fake. It's made up. That's the point. So that's something that I always encourage people. What you post, people say, is what you believe. It's what they say, like, that is your stance. So if you're going to post something, I'm very, very slow, especially when it's political. I'm really, really, in, in any nature, not just actual politics as in government politics, but I mean, like, actual political issues. That's my slide I prepared for y'all. I hope you enjoy it. Um, no, no, you're fine. I'm just using <laughs> yeah. it. It's a time out. Oh, okay. Is that my two minute warning? No, I'm just teasing. Um, so basically, be careful about what you post because people all over will, get, will, will attach you and your name and your appearance to that thing that you post. So I'm very slow about that. I will, I will post a lot of funny videos because honestly, why not? They're hilarious and people find enjoyment out of that. Um, interesting news things in the, in the industry that I'm in, I post because I enjoy that. It's something that's interesting to me. The more you get to know me, the more you know that these are things I enjoy and things that I like. So I don't think you should filter what you post from a standpoint of like, what will everyone else think of me? I think you should just be more careful, more mindful that what you post, being very quick to just like an article, that means you're attaching your name to that thing, to that article. Any questions about that? Because I know that can come up because us marketers have made it a very tricky world with a lot of traps and pitfalls out there. So it's easy to accidentally do one thing and all of a sudden now your wall is like, they're the biggest supporter of this ever. And you're like, whoa, 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 I just read the article. Yeah. Yeah. If you simply un, if 
there a way to unfriend? There, yeah. Unfriend, well, I know you can unfriend people, but Un one way that they follow. know you did it and one way that they don't know Yes, you. this is a great question. Very good. So unfollowing someone, which if you, when you look at a post, there'll be a little carrot type thing on the right, and you can click it, and it gives you options of what you want to do. So you can either hide that post, which some of my friends have accidentally fallen into one of the marketing pitfalls, and it's a post that nobody wants to see that all of a sudden got blasted over all over across all their walls or whatever. But you can click that and either hide the post or you can unfollow that person. And even unfollow new, like let's say um, I love BBC, but let's just say that uh, you hated BBC and you're like, I don't want anything to do with it. I hate seeing these kind of articles. I hate seeing the information they put out. A lot of times it'll even let you say, let's say one of your friends shares something from that site. It'll say unfollow the person or unfollow the article source, as in you won't see it in other places. So obviously that depends on how integrated they are. That source is integrated with Facebook, so that may not give you the option every single time. But unfollowing a person will just mean you, you still are friends on Facebook. You still have access to their information to see what they're doing when you, when you want to. <laughs> but when you don't want to, you're not going to be getting it in what they call your news feed which is how you use Facebook. But yeah, yeah, Lee. So, so having been hiring and recruiting over the years, um, you're, not, you're not worried about the impact of posting videos and or pictures and how that affect your possibility of getting a position with recruiters or? Yeah, I, well, I wouldn't go, so I, would, I wouldn't go quite, I'm definitely worried about that for sure. I mean, that's definitely something there's an element of just common sense. You know, we, we've, we've done some hiring recently, um, and we're in the middle of hiring right now, too. And we will come across some people's, you know, we, we connect with them on everything. And if, you know, their Twitter profile is private, and then once you get access, it's all these just, just profane things that they're ripping apart, celebrities or whatever else, we're like, and do I want you representing, you know, one of my $15,000 a month clients? Probably not, you know. So there's things like that that we'll go through and say, okay, that's just, that's ridiculous. Um, or if it's obvious that they haven't gotten out of the college phase <laughs> where they are still very much living it up all the time, it's like, well, what you do on your own time is your own time. That's totally fine. But I want someone who's alert, who's ready to go who is very action oriented. And if, if you're constantly hung over, you know, it's gonna be hard for me to know that you're gonna represent us very well. So, um, so yeah, so I would say there's definitely things to be careful of as far as posting. However, as far as posting images across the board, you know, that's kind of how we communicate now, you know? And so that's how you, people get such an inside picture of why it's so interesting and, and, and kind of of what you're doing in your life. So let's talk about another, let, let's transition from Facebook. We can go back to it, but I think this is gonna be something that is actually probably, believe it or not, way more relevant to you right now. Can you guess what platform I'm about to bring up? Close. There's two platforms that all your, your kids and grandkids are on. Instagram is one of them. YouTube's really good. Snapchat, you got it. So Snapchat is going to be the biggest platform second to Instagram and Facebook. Now, why would I say second to Instagram and Facebook as in they're one entity? They were bought, exactly. Facebook owns Instagram. So both those platforms are basically Facebook. One's just the picture filtered version. <laughs> Not many statuses or anything like that. Did y'all hear about how Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, how he tried to buy Snapchat? Three billion dollars and the CEO of Snapchat refused. That's how big Snapchat is and is going to be down the road. Why? Now I know what you're all thinking. We've all read the news articles. We have all know what Snapchat has been kind of blasted across, but times are starting to change. Why would Snapchat become the biggest, one of the biggest platforms? 
They do video, yep. So the way Snapchat works is, we'll do one right now. You can, the way Snapchat works, I'm gonna pull it up. So there's actually no way, I know we're looking on my phone, so you can see, there's no way to actually post content outside of this screen. As in, like on, on YouTube or anywhere else, you can upload content, but there's no way to actually post content without using the screen. So, everyone, can we just do a quick wave? We'll do a quick wave. Quick wave, we're coming over here. Awesome, very cool. So, this is now, here's, the, here's what I just posted, so obviously I can review it and I can throw different funny things on there, whatever else I want. We'll put the, we'll put the battery on there, the charge, full charge battery on there. So I'm gonna post this now, just posted it, and that's the only way to do it. Now the video will only last as long as it's been recorded, or if we took an image, you can choose anywhere from one to 10 seconds for how long it will last, and then it is gone. Yes? Yes, you can screenshot it, there's a workaround where you can actually download it to your phone, like all these kind of things. However, I don't mean like post something, and of course you can imagine what it was used for very early on. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the interesting part about it is everywhere else we are used to content lasting forever, but we consume content in a way that is very quick. I used to care a lot about what my Facebook wall looked like. That used to be where you would go. You would go, if you wanted to learn a lot about a, a girl or a guy, you would go to their Facebook wall. You'd figure out, how can I go to their Facebook wall, and then I can learn all these things about them. And I mean, that's how it initially just launched, is because I didn't have to know someone else to do recon for me to learn about some girl I was interested in. I could just go to their Facebook wall and be like, oh, cool, you, you like Coldplay. I hate Coldplay. All right, but you could keep going down the line and like learn more about them or whatever else and figure out how you could connect. Now, we have a news story that's constantly churning. So we don't care about really permanence as much anymore. We just kind of see information and go on to the next. The interesting thing about Snapchat is it's in the now. I can't take a picture here and then three days from now post it on Instagram and say, about to give a talk to this group. Because that happened three, you know what I mean? That happened, that happened later. With Instagram, I have to do it, I'm sorry, with Snapchat, I have to do it in the moment. And it's gone very quickly. So what it's doing is it's a platform that's in the now. It's something that, is, that fits and matches the way people use technology now, which is very quick. You know, we don't want pictures storing on our, our phones as much anymore because they fill up our phones. Pretty soon we're going, oh, now I can't take a picture when I want to, even though, yes, I love showing everyone. And that's why Instagram has become such a big thing is because you can upload those pictures and easily access them when you want to, but they're not living on your phone necessarily and filling up the storage on your phone. Of course, when we think about like memories, yes, that is definitely changing. And that is definitely something that's really interesting. And that's why I don't think Instagram will ever die or ever disappear is because that's where you can store memories. That's where you can have things that you can reference for later. Whereas Snapchat is more of a real time reality TV in everyone's pocket of all of your, everyone else's lives. So it's something that you can reference and check out. And I mean, I'm, there's people I'm following on here, celebrities, everything else. We'll pull up, let's see if we can pull up uh, one person who's a celebrity here. So here, well, I'll just show you quick. Let me see if I, oh yeah, I've got my, head, my uh, mic in here so you can't hear. But basically, he's just talking and he's just saying, hey, here's some updates in my life. And um, he's probably gonna be at the Grammys tonight. Or yeah, last night I think he's at the Grammys. And he'll say like, hey, here I am with so and so. And this is what's going on. It's more of a less filtered approach, a less filtered view into people's lives, which is really fascinating. So some quick things is I would get on the platform. I know that sounds crazy. I know that you're gonna go, oh, I never in a million years thought I'd be on Snapchat. But guess what? You said the same thing about Facebook. And you're on Facebook now. So, the sooner, maybe not. Okay, that's all right. Here's a quick question though. How many of you all thought, I am never ever gonna put a credit card on the internet? 
<laughs> How many of you all have put a credit card on the internet? All right, okay, exactly. So this is always something that happens whether we like it or not. Now, if you don't want to be on certain platforms, I completely understand. In fact, I'm very, very jealous because I wish I didn't have to guess. They're a lot of work. Exactly, they're exhausting <laughs> at times. But it's something that is really, really good. I have like five or six platforms. Pinterest is a perfect example. I love Pinterest. It's really, really fun. You can learn so many creative ideas. I haven't been on Pinterest in months just because all the other platforms are stealing for my time. They're all bidding for my time. And one is all of a sudden cooler and newer and more interesting. And so then I go there and go there. So I completely understand if you want to be on them. However, if your desire is, for, is to be caught up with your grandkids, or to launch, and, ha and if you have a B to C business, which by the way, I'm doing a lot of B to B business on Snapchat right now, but that's Josh, tell everybody what that is. Yeah. Oh, sure, sorry. Thank you. Please, by all means, anytime I say something that's a confusing acronym, I will find work in marketing. That's our world is full of acronyms. So business to business is B to B. So either there's B to C, which is business to consumer, as in, you know, you have a Froyo shop and you want to sell more Froyo ice cream to your consumers then, or yogurt technically, then you are going to do things that are going to adopt to more consumers. B2B, you're thinking suit and tie, most likely. That's usually what people just kind of categorize that as in, I'm a business who wants to sell to another business so it can help them reach their audience. So. Whether you're doing this for, we'll just keep it simple, whether you're doing this for business reasons or for personal reasons, here are some things of why you should be on Snapchat. It's the fastest growing demographic because the grandma effect is starting to happen on Snapchat. I have one of my cousins, I love her, she's awesome, but I am sick of my second cousin at this point because it is just nonstop. And you think I'm kidding. I could literally show you right now 50 pictures that have been posted in the last like hour of her kid. And I love that she loves her kid. And I think that's awesome. I just don't as much as she does. And I'm like, look, I don't want to know every update. I want to see like, wow, it's so, wow, you've grown to be so big. That's the moment I want, not I know, because I've been there the whole time, because I've seen her the time. So, that's starting to happen. Now, of course, her mom, my aunt, loves it, eats it all up, so that's the way they communicate. That's totally cool. I'm not hating on them in that way. I just think that they should send it to each other privately so they can enjoy that and not put it on everyone else. But, obviously, she's not in this room, so that's okay. <laughs> can you follow that? You could, I could, but see, then I do miss out on that one moment where <laughs> it's something not about her kid that's actually interesting, and I'm like, her kid. My second cousin, I just need to be more personal here and actually connect. Okay, so that, those are the things. So what I would say is, a lot of times we can make the excuse, myself included, of, well, that's just not for me, or that's just not something I need to spend my time with, or it's too advanced, or whatever else. And especially when it comes to something that already has a, ma a mass adoption, my encouragement is to jump all in, because you only get better at learning. And then if you don't do it now, you're gonna make the mistakes that potentially a lot of your friends make when they jump on Facebook, where they start posting things to the world thinking they're sending a direct message to someone else. And you're going, that's not, nope, nope, let me help you out here. That first off, uh, that was really embarrassing for you <laughs> because that was a very private message and now it's blasted out. So those are the kind of mistakes that can be made. Whereas if you get into it now and you get into it and you start learning now, you can stay ahead of it along with the trends. Plus your grandkids are going to think that you're pretty awesome and your kids as well because they're like, wow, dad, like grandpa knows how to use Snapchat and you don't. True story. This is my grandpa versus my dad. My grandpa, he isn't a tech whiz, but he understands how to use the internet. My dad, not so much. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? I'm like, don't you know your son runs an internet company? I'm like, you gotta get on this. But anyway, cool. All right, well, let's get into some of my favorite time, which is just straight Q&A. So you, you know a lot about me. I'd love to learn a lot about you. Yes, let's go ahead and start right here, and then we'll work our way. What am I just putting a picture up for one to 10 seconds? 
Great question. What good, and I'll repeat it um, so that Mike doesn't have to get past all the way on here. What good does a, putting a picture out for one to 10 seconds? How long do you look? Here's the interesting thing. So it locks you into one to 10 seconds. Do you have Instagram? No. Okay. Do you, so Facebook? No. Okay, that's right. <laughs> So the way we use Instagram and Facebook now, because we're so inundated with content, is we swipe. So those pictures get maybe a half a second of actual attention. Okay. So by making it supply and demand. So by making it disappear, something that would typically only be a half a second of attention now becomes four or five seconds of attention. So the interesting thing about that is it's all about bidding for attention. We talked about all these social platforms, which are all awesome. They all have their own purposes. They're all really, really good. But the importance, and this is gold for obviously business and marketers like myself, is all about attention. Let's use the example of email. When email first came out, did an email go unread? No. no. We were sick of mail. We were like, ugh, more mail. Even as a kid, I remember like, oh, man, so much mail. And this email came out and it was like every single one. You would read, you would read that forward, even though you knew that it was a chain mail, it's telling about how you would die alone if you didn't send it to like 10 people. But you would read the whole thing. You are like, this is stupid. You see what it says in line like 500? It's so dumb. And you're reading the whole thing. Now, People get excited when they get mail. <laughs> you know, it's actually like, wow, someone took the time to write me a letter. That's awesome. And I mean, this email going right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can't keep up with email. I think my email has, if I get under 200 e unread emails in my inbox, that means I can go home in peace and sleep well that night. I mean, that's my only goal, is to get around 200. So I'm right now, I think it's like four or 500 unread emails that I need to get into. So it's all about attention. Even though it may show itself in different forms, that's why it's so interesting, and that's why it's such a powerful platform, because they said, you know what? People aren't paying attention. We're going to limit the attention you can get it to begin with. So is it 1 to 10 from when I look at it? Yeah. Oh, it's not out there, it's gone. Oh, good point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, let me clarify. So yeah, so basically it's kind of like, think about it in the form of an email. Like someone sends you an email, you have until you open that email, but once you open that email, that email is only going to live for 10 seconds. So yeah. Great. No, that's really helpful. I didn't even think about that. Thanks for that. Sir, no, you're good. Yeah. I have a question about Facebook. Several of yeah. my friends, their Facebook accounts have been hacked, and I'm never quite sure. Not going to what I have been, but what do you do with your hacked use? Is it enough to change the password? Do you have to start all over? What do you do? Great question. So typically, hackers are there for a couple reasons. The main is they just want to get as much information on you as possible. So, so really, it, it's two reasons. It's either to spread the word about something. You know, you have how many friends, if you don't mind me picking on your friend, but how many friends do you have on Facebook? Around 200. Okay, yeah, the average person has 130. So you're already more popular than the average person, so at least you can go home. But, so the average person has 130. So a hacker's thinking, I have the chance to potentially reach 130 people with whatever piece of information they have, right? If they want to, so sometimes when people's accounts get hacked, and you see this with celebrities all the time, you know, because they have millions of followers, and so when someone gets in, all of a sudden it's just this spamming of content on there that's just like, whoa, because we're reaching you know, that much more people. So it's either to, to spread information or to gain information, as in, of course, when we think of a typical hacking, we think of like getting credit card information, all that. Now, Facebook's locked down in that regard, so you can't really get, really the only benefit people get is, um, it's going in and basically getting one password and then using that password in other places. The chances are they most likely, because of how locked down, and I know I've, I've developed, I think, 80 apps inside Facebook, so I know like the back end and how it all works, and there's some crazy cool things that are there, really, really interesting stuff. It's so locked down, chances are your friends did something somewhere else, and they got hacked somewhere else or their password is password. And so then it's just like almost being invited to be hacked. So one suggestion I do, make, I do want to make 
And this is, you know, I know like even my grandpa's password is his favorite football team. I'm just like, Grandpa, like, you are very tech savvy. Like, this is really easy to hack you. You know that, right? I would make sure that all of your passwords, and if you get one thing from today, I hope it would be at least this. So make sure all of your passwords have at least one capital letter, at least one number, and I would go as far as saying at least one symbol. So if you do that, like, I mean, you can use, I use exclamation mark all the time, which I know is still not the safest, but uh, if you use a question mark, if you use whatever else, that's at least one thing that you know is one more barrier of entry. And if your password is just lowercase numerical, or um, alphabet. Yeah, alphabet, yeah, basically lower, lowercase alphabet, you're, there's a good chance you could probably get hacked. So I would just encourage that. Yeah, Richard. Um, the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I had, um, I just started Facebook yeah. because it was not encouraged where I work formally. Sure. Um, and what, <laughs> what I don't understand is all these people that want you to post, maybe I'm just in a conservative Christian group, but sure. um, they want you to post again, or they want you to pray for somebody, or they want you to share whatever they wrote or whatever they put on theirs. Sure. And I'm not interested in that. Yeah. And, right. and I just want to eliminate that. Yeah. And, you know, I don't need to prove to somebody that I'm their friend by posting what they post. I completely I, agree with that. And, and that's kind of annoying. So I would like to be yeah. able to, I don't need to unfriend my cousins, but I, I do need to somehow limit that. Sure, and, absolutely. And if there's these people that check in to different places, I don't need to know that somebody's at LAX. I don't need to know that they're at the hotel. So how do I get those eliminated so I don't even have to be annoyed by them? <laughs> So great question, great point. So first off, doing something where you're saying comment amen or comment like or whatever, the only thing they're trying to do is get you to comment or like so it reaches your audience. So it's a pretty, I'll put it simply, it's a very selfish move of saying, I want you to spread this to your network. So it's kind of like a, a uh, finally we don't have to go down to you there. So anyway, so I what I would say is, really honestly, the way the platform is built is people that are using it to that extreme, where they're using every feature in the platform, and you're just like, whoa, easy. That's probably the only way you, to get rid of that would be to unfollow them. Now, thankfully, unfollowing is not the same as unfriending. So you can still be friends with them. I unfollow, I wouldn't want to show my list of, un, of people I haven't followed. My thread, Honestly, people look at it and they go, man, this is boring. It's all business articles. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, that's the only reason I'm here because I'm interested in these things. So unfollowing, anytime I see something that is slightly, like, not slightly annoying, that makes it sound like I've got a, I'm, I'm very impatient. But anything that's- I admit I am. No, it's all right. So, <laughs> so I would say anything that annoys me, I'm going, okay, this is my tool. This is my tool to connect with people I want to. So if there's something that's annoying here, I'm gonna just unfollow because I know the chances are that's I'm gonna get annoyed by that same person several other times from what they post. And I don't wanna be annoyed with them because I kind of like them in real life. So I would rather unfollow them now so our friendship will be better down the road, as ironic and weird as that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, and then write in, and we'll go ahead. Yeah. We can the mic. Cool. We just keep so, all right. you know, like, you pick the interesting, interesting times, and uh, uh, obviously a, a topic of, of, of great discussion and debate, because, you know, it's like, where are we going with this? Um, and these platforms, like I said, we had snail mail, we had email, and then we have Facebook, and then on and on and on. So to me, Snapchat is, is really the perfect venue, because what are you? You're a marketer. Know your audience. More importantly, how can I connect and capture my audience? So for all the people out there, and there are a lot of them uh, that are ADHD, Snapchat's got to be the, you know, whoever came up with it, he's a genius. You also have plausible deniability. She posts something, and I pull it up, and it's three seconds, it's gone. I'm like, you, and she's like, what? It's not there, okay? 
And uh, so, so where are we going with this, and, and how does this truly impact the human race from the point of view of social interaction, human interaction, sure. instead of looking at the screen, which you see all the time now? Great question. Really good point. This is, this is a fun debate. So there's, there's a new platform that just arose. <laughs> I know, another one. But here's the interesting part about it. It's only audio. And so all the posting, you can't comment. You can all, all you can do is like and reply via audio. And so it's been really fun. It's called it's called Anchor. Anchor.fm is the platform. It was literally launched three days ago. So I mean it is brand new. As the day it launched, it was on the best new apps for Apple. So I mean it's already taken off pretty well. The interesting part about it is there's really fun debates, and one of them that actually I kicked off is what does the future look like? And it, I read a ton of books. My whole company, even though we're an internet company, as a team, as a whole company, we, we, we read a book a month, and so we're jamming through a lot of good business books, a lot of things. One of the most fun books I recently read is called Ready Player One. This is obviously not a business book, but it's more of, of a really good, entertaining read. That book talks about kind of what the future looks like. Everyone's in exosuits and they don't really leave there. It's kind of like up, you know, when you watch the movie, or I'm sorry, Wally. -E. You watch the movie Wally -E and everyone's just kind of like drinking soda and in these big, you know, chairs and that just shuttles them around. The inch, so I, I presented that debate, debate and there's a lot of really good discussions and I want to give credit to those people um, in that discussion. Basically, the interesting, <coughs> interesting thing about technology, every single year we've had the same discussion. The telephone came out. People were like, what? You're going to be talking to a box? Like, connected to a wall? Like, what about this is sociable, you know? Especially because then you actually had to face the wall, you know? And so you'd just be like this the whole time. However, interesting things have come out that have actually helped us connect more. And so with something like Anchor, where I can share a thought and share something that I'm really interested in and share something I'm passionate about with the world, and I can get voices back and reply, I actually feel more connected to those people even though I've never met them in real life because I can hear the cadence, I can hear the way they talk, I can hear their emotions through the way that they speak. And so there's interest, interesting things like that that actually, I would say, with this kind of technology, it's actually making the world a smaller place. Whereas before, you were limited to your county that you would you know, be able to interact with people. And so now people can actually have a better chance of finding each other. There's, a, there's an awesome chance of discovering people all across the world because you can say, this is what I believe and this is what I'm passionate about. And then someone over in Uganda says, no way. This is also something I believe and something I'm passionate about. And then next thing you know, you potentially could have a marriage. I mean, we gave, you gave the example earlier about you know, your, your daughter and, and, and um, Marine, is that what you said? Military? Did you say he's in the Marine? Uh, Air Force. Air Force, okay, cool. And the, and, and the gentleman in Afghanistan, now you've got these relationships pulling in. So it's definitely an interesting debate. I think that our, the way we're wired as human beings to be relational, I think it's going to constantly be a balance where, yes, there's going to be things that are different you know, and, and, and very much would seem antisocial, but it's going to swing back around. The most interesting thing, I posed a debate about are you extroverted or introverted on that Anchor app. Most of them came back and said they were introverted. And these people are like really fun people to listen to. And the reason they said it is they're like, this app, I don't like to be in a room of people, but I love really good conversations. Just because I'm introverted doesn't mean I'm weird. I just don't like to have very outgoing conversations and being a large group of people. So this app has given me the ability to talk to a mass amount of people but in a form that's very comfortable for me. And I, being an extrovert, I thought, oh, well, a lot of these people must be extroverted because they're very, the way that they talk is very vivacious, they're very, seems like they're very eloquent in the way they talk, so I think it's a really interesting trend. Great question, love the debate. I'll probably talk a whole hour just on that. Okay, well, okay. thank you. So we right. could go on forever. Thank you.